Okay, start. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Meet Your Future event today. Uh, my name is Michelle. I'm part of the Bridge GM team at Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Today's event is part of our focus on National Volunteers Week. You can find out more about our events this week at www.gmax.co.uk, which is your one stop shop for information on courses, jobs, and careers in Greater Manchester. Meet Your Future was launched in April 2019 to enable more young people like you to meet with and have meaningful conversations with employers while experiencing different workplaces. Over the past 12 months, we've been speaking with young people from all 10 local authorities in Greater Manchester to find out how you feel you should be supported now and into your future. We developed a suite of information, resources, services that are there to help you, and this can be found on GMAX. Hopefully many of you will already be familiar with, with GMAX. Please speak to your teacher to find out more if you haven't used it. We've also adapted these Meet Your Future events to better fit what you've been telling us. And throughout this academic year, you've been able to join sessions and chat with Greater Manchester and national employers about our growth sectors and all the different pathways and careers opportunities that will be available to you in the future right here in Greater Manchester. This session, very excited to say that we're going to be hearing from John and Helen. Uh, John's from Catch22 and Helen's from the Gove Company, and they're talking about getting involved in the National Citizen Service uh, in CS. Throughout the session, um, you've got the opportunity, obviously, to ask questions. We'll cover these at the end. Um, also, if you'd like to use captions or subtitles during this, please select captions and subtitles on in your video controls. OK, I'm now going to pass over to John first uh, for his part of the talk. Hello everyone, hope you're all having a, a really nice day. Uh, so yeah, my name is John um, and I work on the NCS programme, but I work for an organisation called Catch22 uh, and we're a national organisation that delivers NCS in all the regions um, within within England. Uh, but yeah, in particular for me, I am from Liverpool, but I, I oversee the Manchester team um, over, over in Stockport, Oldham and Tameside, which are some of the areas that you guys will probably be, uh, be from. Um, so just to sort of sum up what the NCS programme is in, in a quick wrap up before I go into a bit more detail. So NCS is a two week experience over the summer holidays when you've sort of had a bit of got a bit of downtime after you've done your exams and you've had all the stresses and build up to, you know, getting revision. Your parents or your carers are sort of pushing you to do your best. And um, there's a lot of pressures at school, especially for you guys over the last couple of years. Things have been quite tough, um, but this is a really good opportunity to meet lots of new people, spend a couple of weeks away from home, do lots of different activities, take part in, in different challenges, meet lots of new community and charity providers and entrepreneurs and businesses and put yourself out there on the, the map of employability essentially and, and get yourself a lots of new skills. OK, so this summer, You've most likely, you know, I think after exams have finished, um, mostly for year 11s, you've got one of the biggest summers um, that you're ever going to have in your lifetime. For me, being at school was really stressful. I did do I did do all right at my exams, but I had about 10 weeks off of doing absolutely nothing. And I'm sure that's the same for you guys. Once your exams come to a come to an end, that's a massive 10 weeks of not being able to just, you know, just sitting at home, watching TV, playing on your Xbox, going and playing football with your mates, hanging around, doing, you know, nothing very productive with all the amazing skills and the things that you've learned at school from, you know, your wonderful teachers um, and the people that you might be sort of engaging with out of education as well. So this is an amazing opportunity for you to spend just two weeks out of your 10 weeks off going on, on a residential, meeting lots of new people, taking part in amazing challenges and activities, really pushing your personal barriers and boundaries, adding to your personal portfolios and just giving yourselves an extra few strings to your bow and getting forward in the future. So NCS is one of the biggest youth movements in Europe. It started in 2010 and over and since then over 600,000 young people have took part in the program. So that's 600,000 young people that have wanted to do something different with this summer, meet lots of people from you know different parts of the country, 
have a massive impact on social um social lives charitable lives and other people's lives within the community and they've wanted to gain lots of new skills whilst all having fun at the same time um it's an NC, it's a government initiative the government created it back in 2010 and they've been you know backing it since since its inception all those years ago and it's one of the like i said it's one of the biggest youth movements in europe and it's an amazing opportunity for you to be part of one of the biggest youth movements in europe it's globally and nationally recognized um you know from from all over the world for what it has to offer and the skills that it gives young people which i'll talk to you about uh, in just a sec so like i mentioned before it's a two week long experience so i'll kick it off um, with the first part of the program which is week one and for this part of the week it's called be epic so we want you guys to go out be epic on a residential, live live life to the absolute maximum um, and gain lots of new skills. So this part of the week is all around pushing yourself, being in the outdoors, taking part in activities such as zip line, bush crafts, dragon boat racing, Jacob's Ladder, lots of different epic challenges where you can get out and about in the outdoors, socialise with lots of new people, push some of those those things that you you know those skills that you're not quite good at grasping and becoming turning some of those weaknesses into into the strengths that you're going to need and developing in the future now this part of the week is very fun it's very adaptable it's very active so you will spend a lot of the week being quite tired but mostly in the evenings but this is all about sort of being energetic jumping off things dangling from things doing a bit of swimming lots of different activities and then during the evening we have things such as the campfire, so we'll give you big bags of marshmallows. You'll be able to sit around the campfire with your new found friends, be able to roast them, catch up, have a sing along, get to know lots of new different people. Um, and that's what this part of the programme is, is all about. Now, sometimes people are not really fond of, you know, being in the outdoors. They've got a fear of water or a phobia of heights. We're never going to make anyone do anything that they're not comfortable with doing. So this is completely challenged by choice. But what we will try and get you to do is push those personal boundaries because NCS is all about growth and development. And that's what we want to make sure that you guys are doing on programme. If you're not growing and developing, then you're not going to be, you know, get, getting further on in life and getting all those skills that you're going to need to, to develop and, and get to get to the places that you're going to need to in the future. So we want to ensure that you guys are pushing yourselves and making sure that you're trying to push and test those boundaries that you might have. The second part of this week is all about you guys living life. Now, these are some of the life skills that you're going to need for the future. So the first part of the week is all activity based. This part of the week is workshop based around increasing those life skills that you guys are going to need for your future. So we want you to start thinking about how you can become more confident, how you can think about being more mentally resilient in your future so that when you do have, you know, life issues that that do come around, how are you going to deal with those in the best, most productive and, and supportive way? Not only that, it's around sort of focusing on public speaking skills, project management, money management, employability skills. These are some of the things that young people don't learn at school and we don't do them in in a school environment they're not they're not based in a school setting it's not like the classroom at all these sessions are completely engaging they're really interactive they're fun they're not sat around tables you will be presenting you will be mar marking down ideas and coming up with brainstorms for different projects this is all about getting you guys to give yourselves an extra few strings to your bow so that you can ultimately say to other people I've got more skills than you because I want to be I, it is a, comp a competition in life and this is what we this is what NCS is all about it's about giving you guys more skills than other people so that you can further your your opportunities and your chances in getting where you need to get in the future so that's the end of week one so you're going to hand your bags back to your parents or your guardians on the Friday after a week long residential or Monday to Friday um, and then you're going to come on to the second week of the programme and this is where we want you guys to go and do good in your local communities. Now we're literally going to hand over the power to you to do whatever you want that's going to maximise change within your local area. Now if you feel passionate about the homeless, about animal cruelty, about 
dementia, about cancer, about absolutely anything. We want you guys to go and create a project in your local community that will raise awareness, fundraise and do something practical um, to get your hands dirty and making and making a real positive change in your community. I had a group a couple of autumns ago and one of the young lads in the group uh, he was he was a child that was looked after he, he was you know he was neglected by his parents and he was living in a residential care home and he felt passionate especially during that time in the year where christmas was approaching where he wanted to support those young people in care homes and um, with some gift hampers for christmas to really bring the spirits up because you know he understood because he come from that background that it was quite tough around that time of year. So he got him and the team to be doing a sponsored cycle and um, from one end of Liverpool to the other. They raised over a thousand pounds and with that money they created Christmas hampers and they give they delivered them and give them to around 15 to 16 young people um, across across the Liverpool area um, and they went into the care homes. They went and distributed them to all the young people and it really did change and have an impact on those young people's lives. Just that one evening in the year had a massive change on them young people's lives and the group felt that they were absolutely made up and, and, and happy with the, the impact that they'd had on the community. But this was totally youth led. Now we did not get involved. We let the young people deliver this project themselves. They created it, they drawn up the ideas for it, they put risk assessments in place and they went and delivered that project with our guidance and support because we want to empower you guys to be young leaders. You are the future generation. If you're watching this now, we potentially could have a future prime minister, a future business owner, a future, a future whatever it might be. That's what you guys are going to be doing in the future. So we want to empower you guys with leadership skills because that's how you're going to get forward in life. And this what this is what this part of the programme is all about. Now, every year, um, NCS always makes the national headlines. We're always in the papers, on the radio, on the television. We're all over the place for all the amazing things that we do. And it's not NCS, it's the young people that take part in it. So we don't take the credit for all the good things that you guys do. This is what young people are doing in their local communities. And imagine taking something like this to a job interview where you're asked lots of different questions what's different about you compared to the other candidates that we're interviewing if you want to get into this university what stands out about you compared to the other people that, that are applying if you've got a news article clipping saying that you've raised this, raised this amount of money in your local community. This is the project you delivered. This is the impact that you had on your local area. It's going to make you stand out compared to other people. It's an amazing opportunity and it's just something nice for you to have as well. And it does give you that warm, fuzzy feeling in your heart to say, I've helped change someone's life. I've made a, a great impact on someone, even if it was for just one day. Just one conversation or one project can really change the way someone feels about themselves and their lives. So that's what this part of the programme is all about. So that's the end of the two weeks on NCS. And then at the end of summer, towards the beginning of, of September, we're going to throw you a massive party to celebrate all the amazing achievements that you guys have achieved over the summer, where you'll be reignited and sort of reunited with all your teammates, your team leaders and all the people that have took part in NCS in your local area as well. And we're going to most importantly hand the NCS certificate to you guys as well. And this is an amazing piece of paper and certificate to have um, as part of your personal portfolios. Often when people think of a certificate, they think it is just a piece of paper. Yes, it is a piece of paper, but at the same time, it does have the Prime Minister's signature on. Now, a document with your name that certifies you've took part in a programme that's been signed by the Prime Minister is a massive achievement and not many people have it in the country. Like I said, 600,000 young people in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of young people at the end of the day. And if you've got that certificate part of your personal portfolio, again, it's just going to excel your skill set and all the amazing achievements that you've got. And like I mentioned before, NCS is nationally and globally recognised. We've got NCS graduates that have moved to Australia, Singapore, New Zealand, and they often get in contact with us and say, by the way, I've had another job interview, I've talked about NCS again, and they already know what NCS is all about. So it's not just opportunities in the UK that come from NCS, there's global opportunities as well, and that certificate really gets you there. 
not only that, you you will get your, your certificate, but also we're going to throw a massive party. There'll be lots of street food. There'll be a dance floor. There'll be a DJ, and it's a good opportunity to let your hair down after after a crazy summer of doing NCS, going on holiday, and spending a bit of downtime and relaxing and chilling out over your holidays as well. So, one of the big questions that people have. Uh, is how much does NCS cost now? Obviously, everything included in this two week experience, it costs £1,200. Now, that is for transport, accommodation, venues, activities, food, drink, the staffing, all the activity leaders. £1,200 is the overall cost um, of NCS. Now, there is a bit of a twist to this. So this is how much it costs per person, per place. This is what the government invest in each young person. All we ask for is a small contribution of just £50. So the government will cover the rest. They will pay £1,150 towards your place. You just have to contribute £50. Now, Sometimes, you know, some of you guys might be on free school meals, your, fi your household might be financially struggling, uh, you might be on benefits, that's absolutely fine. Um, NCS is completely accommodating for all walks of life, regardless of, of people's circumstances and background. So if £50 is too much of a stretch for you, then £10 um, is what we'll offer it for, for, for young people in, in special circumstances. You just need to let us know what price works for you and we'll accommodate accommodate you guys and get you booked onto, onto our summer programme. So ordinarily to get involved, we would hand out these lovely forms on screen, um, but there's lots of different ways that you can get involved in NCS. Um, so without obviously going through this form, um, because you guys might not have this form to hand, the best way for you to get involved is to go on the website. So if you just search NCS, uh, we are NCS.com or search NCS into Google, the website will come up there, but lots more information, probably a bit more than what I've explained today excuse me, and it'll also tell you the best way to get signed up and get involved in the summer as well. Now, NCS doesn't just stop at a summer programme. There's lots of different opportunities that can come from NCS, um, either, either if you take part in the summer or if you can do other things as well. And some of the other different projects that NCS offer are, um, we have another programme called Change Makers, which is all around social action, which is pretty similar to week two which is what I was just talking about a little bit earlier on, the do good part of NCS, where you can get involved in do good projects in your local community. You can keep delivering and taking part in different act social action projects throughout the year, rather than just over in the summer. Again, a very rewarding experience that you can con continue to deliver every month for the rest of the year, maybe for two years. It depends how much you want to get involved and how much you want to commit. Um, Change Makers is completely down to you guys it's commit as you can um project and then also there's future makers as well where there's paid paid placements that you can take part in and um, once you complete the ncs program or its projects as well which is a really good opportunity to get into apprenticeships or employment as well um so the the opportunities don't just stop at a summer program there's plenty of others and for us at catch 22 another, another thing that we offer as well aside from uh, the summer program and change makers is that if you wanted to get your first ever job once you turn 18, we can offer you that opportunity to develop those skills and come and work with us as a paid, a paid team leader on program as well. And how that works is once you've graduated the program and you've completed one of NCS's projects, you can join our upgrade program. And the upgrade program is very, very similar to a, a training package. And what we do is we put you on a 10 week intense course, which is one one evening a week for 10 weeks. And we'll go through safeguarding, um, facilitation skills, how to be a good team mentor, how to support people who have got mental health issues, professional boundaries, professionalism. And we'll put you on that 10 week course. We'll give you an interview at the end of it. And then, you know, hopefully you'll get that position because we will train you up to, to the brink. Um, and then you'll come and work with us on program where you'll be a paid staff member and you'll be able to help transform other young people's lives and make a real impact on other young people's NCS experience as well. And then from that, 
you never know what other opportunities could come. We've had staff members that have done the upgrade program. They've worked with us one year and now they're full time staff members in our office as well. So it, again, it does create plenty of other opportunities going forward. So for you guys to get involved, like I said, there's plenty of opportunities that you can get stuck in. Um, all you need to do is just go to the NCS website, get involved, tell us that you're interested, and then we can we can get you involved in all the projects that we've got lined up for you. Um, and then, yeah, it's pretty much the world is your oyster. You can just take it from there. And that's pretty much it from me. Um, thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm going to hand over to the lovely Helen. She's going to talk you through um, some of the feedback from NCS. Thanks, John. Um, so I'm Helen from The Growth Company. We manage the NCS programme across the whole of the North West, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about what NCS can give you. Um, I'm going to talk to you about some conversations that we've had with 87 young people across the North West, what they said and how NCS can help. And then I'm going to talk to you about the essential skills and why they're important. And then finally, three case studies of real NCS projects from last summer and how the essential skills were used within those projects. OK, so last summer we did nine focus groups, um, so groups of bringing together young people um, to talk to them about three key questions. Here are some of their responses. So one of the questions we asked was, what support do you need to be work ready? So you can see there's quite a lot of text on this slide, um, but just a couple of things that they, they said were that you wanted to identify the skills that they already had and that they need to develop. So what we said, what we've said here is this is what young people have told us that they need and this is how NCS can help. So NCS uses tools to recognise the skills that young people already have and the ones that you want to develop. And then once you've identified those, um, the opportunity to practice and develop those essential skills and as John's already talked about particularly in the live life section in week one and um, there's lots of opportunities to do that but all across the NCS program you'll be learning and developing and practicing skills and um, job applications and the workplace enterprise in the world of work is a key part of the NCS program um, and we have visits from employers and interactions with employers and even interviews depending on the program that you go on We also asked young people, why do you or why would you volunteer? And again, quite a few things came out about what volunteering can give you um, relating to the world of work. So to improve the CV, as John's already said, in our do good section, um, the social action project that you decide on and that you go and deliver gives so much to put on your CV, um, so many skills that you can develop um, and it really looks good to a prospective employer. Similarly, talking about um, opportunities that you've taken part in at job interviews, you can do that as well um, from the social action project in the do good week. Work experience gives you the chance to do different different roles by doing the social action project. Um, there'll be leadership roles, communication, budgeting, um, all things that give you great experience and you'll get a reference. Um, they can use the contacts that you've um, gained through the charities that you might work with to get a reference. Also, sometimes volunteering is, is a requirement of other programmes, so we can actually, through NCS, help you complete those requirements. Finally, we asked these young people if a volunteer opportunity offered just one benefit, what would it be? So what's the key reason for volunteering? Um, again, it's all around employability. Um, so experience to talk about at job interviews. And there's so many experiences you can get from your NCS experience um, from week one and week two. Fun. Hopefully what's come through from John's uh, part of the presentation is, is the fun that you'll have, the, the new friends that you'll meet um, and the things you get to try that you just wouldn't get to in, in, in normal life. And work experience, reference and interviews, particularly as I mentioned, that social action project in your do good week gives you the chance to do different jobs and can use you can use uh, the contacts that you've made as a reference um, into experience there might be opportunities to have that specific opportunity um, by speaking to your local delivery partner 
So essential skills. So these eight essential skills have been recognised across the country as the, the main skills which are needed for almost any job. And you will get what I'm going to talk about is how you can gain those through NCS. So we've got them grouped into four. So in communication skills, there's listening and speaking. Creative problem solving skills are obviously problem solving and then creativity. Self management is about staying positive and aiming high and then interpersonal skills is leadership and teamwork. So these are the essential skills. Why are they important? So. A bit of a quiz here, so higher or lower than 5%. So the, the percentage that someone's yearly wage increases if they have higher le levels of essential skills. Do we think it's higher than 5% or lower than 5%? Let's find out. So hopefully that'll pop up. So it's higher, so 12 to 18% increase on average. So in financial terms, that's between 3,900 and 5,900 pound a year more that somebody's yearly wage increases if they have higher levels of essential skills. So what would you do with 4,000 extra a year? And then higher or lower than 18%. So what percentage of the UK public believe essential skills are important in work? Higher than 18% or lower than 18%? What do we think? It's higher. It's a whopping 89% of the UK public believe essential skills are important in the world of work. OK. Another question. Higher or lower than 52%, <clears throat> what's the percentage of the UK public who believe the essential skills are important in academic attainments? This is about, you know, uh, getting good grades. 71% higher, so it's 71% of the UK public believe essential skills are important in academic attainment. OK, so let's move on to some case studies. Um, so I'm going to talk about three projects uh, that were run in the Northwest last year and pull out the essential skills that were demonstrated by the young people who did these projects. Um, so the first one is some young people who work with the charity Breaking Barriers. Um, they first had to speak to that charity to find out how they could help. So that involved speaking and then listening. And then they came up with an idea to create a mural in a new venue the charity had recently moved to. So they worked together to complete the project within the time frame and budget. So you can see already there's four essential skills straight away there um, just with the start of that case study. And we'll come back to that one a bit a bit later on. OK. This next one is about um, a problem where there was an allotment that had been damaged and um, the young people came up with a creative idea of using the rubble from some of the items that had been ruined to remake the paths within the allotment. So there were problems they encountered, such as they didn't have the knowledge to put the shed back together. So they asked for advice and they worked with the allotment members to solve them. Most importantly, they stay positive, even though when they saw the state of the site, they realised how much work there was to do and they aimed high because they took on the work at the allotment, even when it was clear it was going to be a lot of work. Next case study. So this group of young people, two of the team members were really passionate supporters about a couple of different local charities. So they spoke to each other within their team about supporting these two different charities and they listened to each other and they talked passionately about what they what they wanted to support. So the team then decided let's aim high and support both charities. So how are we going to raise money? So they came up with the creative idea of, of doing a couple of different sponsored walks simultaneously rather than the whole team doing one walk. So that was a very creative way of supporting two charities. And they also came up with creative ideas to rate increase sponsorship, for example, using social media with a link to the two organisations. So members of the public could easily donate to those charities. So doing multiple walks at the same time made for a tougher challenge because there's more logistics to organise. So the group realised there's going to be problems with keeping in touch during those walks. They solved this problem by using walkie talkies and mobile phones to make sure that they were in touch, even in signal black spots. 
So leadership, that's a crucial um, skill, essential skill that you will develop on NCS and one that maybe you wouldn't necessarily get to learn at school, um, but in NCS you'll get it in droves. So members of the team took the lead to ensure everybody was ready for the walk, they checked equipment and they organised the kit. And then the whole team worked together to navigate the routes and made sure that everybody stayed, stayed safe, which is really important, obviously. And finally, they stayed positive, even though there was a bit of rain during the walk and they managed to raise £336 and they split that between both charities, which is quite an achievement in a short space of time. OK, this is this allotment one that I was mentioning before, so some more essential skills. What you'll what you'll see here is this theme that no matter what social action project young people chose, all of the eight essential skills are covered more than once in, in the activities that they do. So this this is some background to this one. So a local allotment was vandalised by local youth um, and the allotment secretary had, ha had been able to secure some funding for its renovation, but not the, the, the people to actually do that. So the young people decided to step in. They only had two days to do this work. So they had to work together with the allotment team members to make the best use of time available. And they spoke to the allotment members and took turns to lead on different elements that needed completing. And as I mentioned before, there was quite a lot of work that needed to be done, but they came up with creative ways to solve the problems. And just to finally wrap up um, our mural that we talked about. So the mural that was um, the creative idea that the young people came up with, they took the lead in different parts of the project. So I mentioned there's different roles you can take within your social action team. Um, for example, buying the equipment, designing and painting the mural. Somebody needs to be the team leader. That might be something you pass around as a as a role. Um, there's, there's always going to be problems, whatever project you're working on and whatever you know challenge you are encountering in life as well. So what NCS can help you do is to when you encounter problems is work through those and find some solutions. So the problem here was the time to complete the project uh, was reduced because of the COVID restrictions. So they solved this by staying longer on the days that they could get access um, to the site for the mural. And finally, the team doing this mural aimed high by electing to complete it at all, which is quite an ambitious project, but they stayed positive despite a couple of problems and the project was a great success. These are three just different examples. There's many, many more every single summer, young people that um, decide on a cause they're passionate about and make a real difference in their local community. Um, so thank you very much for listening to us talk about NCS. Um, and I'll pass back now to round up. <clears throat> Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, thank you so much, John and Helen. Uh, those were really, really great presentations. Uh, loved hearing about all the different um, different uh, case studies that you, you've heard about that you, you told us about there, Helen. That was really brilliant. Um, I've, I've got a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Um, and People watching can also can also pop them in the Q and A if you want to. Um, so, uh, firstly, you've mentioned John that you um, put in NCS on your CV, um, and uh, that employers are interested in it, um, and that you also mentioned the the Catch Twenty Two Upgrades program um, that you've got. You know, for for people that have been on the program. What do you think that um, NCS, as well as the essential skills that, that, that Helen has mentioned, obviously, and gone through, what do you think that NCS really helps young people to, to develop that can um, that can stand them in good stead in the workplace? I think the main thing that, that young people gain from NCS in, in relation to, to employment skills is confidence. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our young people come on programme very nervous or apprehensive about meeting new people and being in new environments. And, and that's just every every step of life, essentially getting a new job or or buying a house or, or getting, you know, putting a, a, an offer down to buy a car. All these things that we do and all the steps we take in life needs confidence in us to actually carry out with those decisions or those choices that we make. And the young people that come on programme, on day one can be very reluctant, quiet, shy, often get a bit homesick and think, oh, I don't know if I want to carry on because I'm, I'm not as confident. And by the end of the programme, the confidence levels from these young people is off the charts. And the, the 
the, the good news stories that we hear of people after programme, when we do check in with them through surveys and when we catch up with them through the upgrade programme or they become a change maker, the young people are thriving and they feel like they've got the confidence to tackle the world. And that's what NCS offers young people. It offers a lot of different skills that me and Helen have covered today, but confidence is is the is the key one, I would say. Right, thank you. That's yeah, I think that's so it's so important to remember that. You can get it from lots of different things in life confidence, but um taking up an opportunity like NCS, um it's a it's a great thing to do in between, you know, school and college or going on to a different training course and it really um it, it's the it's the right time to be doing this kind of course, isn't it? Because this kind of yeah. program because you you're about to start something new and it'll give you that boost before you before you get there. Yeah, definitely. Um, can I ask what some of the best things that you've done while you've been uh, leading NCS, John? So resis or different different uh, projects or young people overcoming different fears. What's the best a couple of really good stories that you've seen? Well, one of the really good stories I've seen from a residential perspective was in 2019. Um, there was a young a young female who come on programme and she had cerebral palsy. Um, she was a wheelchair user and she, you know, was very um, very unable to do specific um, activities. You know, she didn't have really good um, body strength to be able to pull herself up, stand up. Uh, she would she needed one to one support um, and the young people in the group with this other young person were very um, unaware of young people with disabilities or, or any sort of physical barriers and um, that group come together like like they they took her in as if they were all the, her parents and everyone was so supportive and was cheering her on they were getting her involved in the activities they would even challenge NCS staff or, or the activity leaders if they wanted to change something so that it could work for that young person so they were they were even one step ahead of us which is not very likely but this this one group in particular just completely adopted and supported that young person. I think for me, being on programme and seeing young people be so supportive and loving and caring towards young people from all walks of life, it did pull on my heartstrings a little bit, if I'm perfectly honest. But that's what that's what life is all about, is supporting each other and being one and uniting and, and being there for everybody. And, and that group definitely accomplished that. And that young person had an amazing time on programme and at the end of at the end of the summer she thanked us and she was very emotional and and it was it was a it was a really nice experience and that's what we see every year young people supporting each other and coming together and then from a social action perspective i think some of the projects that we see um they're amazing and, and and it's you know whether you don't raise thousands of pounds or you don't put this package together or that package it's the thought behind creating these projects that is the most effective it shows that young people have the ability and the skills to be able to go and do amazing things and sometimes things don't work out like helen mentioned before we all have barriers in life whether it is on ncs it is in life or you know we don't get a good credit score so we can't take a loan out or we don't get the grades we wanted to get to get into university there's so many barriers that we can come across but young people and and, and everyone that wants to make change or be a leader has all those skills and i could give you millions of examples of all the amazing projects we've seen on program but every young person that comes on ncs has the ability to do amazing things and they they everybody demonstrates that and that stands for everyone in the world not just on ncs and ncs is an amazing project to accelerate those those abilities and skills yeah definitely thank you um just a question that we ask uh, everybody now so helen uh, you get maybe your first but how did you get into your own job you know did you do volunteering that you put on your cv and uh, and and helped you kind of get um, different skills to get into work well, great question. Um, yes, actually, I, w I was I was always quite keen at, at a young age to try and work out what am I going to do when I grow up? So I'd look into things when I was a teenager um, and try and sort of find out whether that might be for me. Um, when I was at college, I wrote for the college newspaper because um, I thought I might want to be a journalist at that point. Um, so I did a bit, 
I did a bit of that and then actually I went off that idea. But when I was in education still um, and I, I made it to university, I did actually do some volunteering at university um with with children primary age children um and then i went and did some volunteering abroad whilst i had those long summers that john was talking about when i was a little bit older um i went and taught english in the czech republic and in china um and i was re i was like the the answers to our 87 young people i was really aware at the time how volunteering would help me and how good it would look on my cv and that was a big driver for me to do it actually um so when i was coming out of education I, you know i didn't have much work experience but i could talk on my cv about all the different things i've done and, it, and i think it does show that you're willing to um to do something for, for other people and um, to put yourself out of your comfort zone and if you can not only do those activities but then find the way to put them onto your cv and, and talk about them and recognize that they are leadership or they are communication skills or problem solving skills then it does stand you in really good stead and i have to say actually um john might say similar i don't know but having done that volunteering activity in this country and abroad I then it influenced my career choice because I thought I really enjoy making a difference and helping other people. Um, so my career since then, every job I've had has had something to do with developing people, helping people. And obviously now I'm working with NCS. Um, so it comes full circle. Um, but even if you don't want to go into the charitable sector or, you know, really um, giving back in that really obvious way, it still stands you in brilliant stead to have those skills and to gain those skills. Thank you, Helen. That was that really interesting to to hear your perspective. Yeah, John, what do you, do you have any? Um, do you would you like to share um, how you've got into the role that you're doing today? Yeah, I I worked um, worked for another organisation previously. Um, I was in and out of um, zero hour contracts and you know back in the day of, of those things that we uh, we don't really see much of anymore but that was you know for me financially it was very tough and I had a lot of skills and experience to get where I've got to today but there was no opportunities that, that were there for me um, until I went and done um, some some support and volunteering for um, a Liverpool based charity around helping the homeless um, and I used to do this a couple of evenings a week where um, I would go around Liverpool city centre with care packages uh, hot drinks food and support you know the homeless people on the streets and, and you know speak to them and offer them support packages if needed and um, places to go referrals to different services and it was through that volunteer and opportunity that I met someone that had said that NCS works with them in the summer and provides them with you know funds and and different resources to support homeless people and that's how I got involved in NCS um it's weird now that you've asked me that question I'm actually really reflecting on that um and now yeah I'm, I'm a contract manager and I went from being a team leader back in 20 2013 to becoming you know um you know overseeing the performance of of an entire team which is which is which is really good and I think for me char charity and volunteering and support and being kind is, is at the heart of everything that I do anyway you know I think if there's an opportunity to do something without reward financial reward why not just do it because at the end of the day for me I personally believe that doing charitable things and volunteering really does increase people's emotional intelligence like I am very resilient based on some of the situations that I've been around in, in, in the volunteer in the volunteer sector. It's it's helped me tune in with my emotions and what's going on in the world around us where I am a bit more grounded than I probably was then. You know, I don't think, oh, I've got money and I've got this and I've got that and I've got these luxuries like, you know, like the majority of people have. I, I have a, I have a sense of of feeling sympathetic and wanting to support people that don't have you know certain things or that do need support how can I support you how can we all support each other and I think that's that's what NCS and you know being in the volunteer you know sector in different ways has definitely enabled me to develop those skills and I think it's important if you if you know if you're now thinking you know I I don't know if I if volunteering sounds great to me because sometimes that word can be a little bit threatening or intimidating or you know a bit cheesy but it does create so many opportunities not just not just for other people but for yourself as well and I think it's definitely done that for me. Thank you John that was lovely a really really great 
<laughs> to, hear, to hear your story, that's fantastic. And um, the point you said about emotional intelligence, I mean, maybe, uh, Helen, you need to add that to your list of uh, essential skills because that's a, that's a really um, brilliant angle. And I definitely agree with the, the opening up of opportunities. I certainly wouldn't be in the job that I'm in today if I hadn't done volunteering uh, a few years back that helped me move into the, to the youth sector. So personally, I totally agree. Um, so thank you both very much for, for joining us and thank you uh, to the uh, to, to people watching today. Um, you can keep up to date with everything Meet Your Future at gmax.co.uk, as we said before, and, and see all the previous sessions on YouTube. For uh, teachers listening, I've popped a link in the chat to a feedback form. We'd really, really appreciate uh, any of your um, comments on today's session. Um, it's really important to us that we um, that, that we get feedback from um, from the people that we're trying to, to target. So thank you. And amazing to hear from you, John, and you, Helen. Really, really interesting presentation on the NCS. So thank you. Um, and have a fantastic day, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.